Good evening and welcome back to Capital Time. Politics. I'm Tim Boyle. Lawmakers are combing through a nearly 500-page budget plan released by leadership on Monday. This comes after more than 70 days of the initial July deadline. Joining us for tonight, more insight on what ended up in and what was left out, House Speaker Tim Moore, Republican from Cleveland County. Mr. Speaker, uh, I know time is precious these days. Thank you so much for a little bit tonight. Good afternoon. Good to, uh, good to be talking with you today, Tim. Absolutely. Well, let's start with this. There is some increase in DMV fees. Uh, the sales tax is expanding, uh, but you are going to be reducing the, uh, the, the income tax eventually as well. Is this a net tax cut for all North Carolinians? This budget represents a tremendous tax cut for all North Carolinians. It's roughly $400 million in tax reduction over two years. Significant cuts to the personal income tax both in terms of the percentage going from 5.75 to 5.49, as well as an increase in what's called the standard deduction or the amount of money that folks make without having to pay any tax on it. We've increased that by another $500 for every single taxpayer uh, of money that they won't have to uh, pay for in, in income tax. Uh, you know, also, when you mentioned the DMV fees, you got to remember those modest DMV fee increases that occurred also were, were done as a part of the gas tax reduction, which we did much earlier in session. So we wanted to make sure that we had ample money still flowing to, uh, to the highway trust fund. So, so we, you can say definitively that, that all North Carolinians are getting this. You know you're hearing from the Democrats that this is a middle class uh, tax increase. Uh, research has told you that every single North Carolinian will, will see a tax cut as a result of this budget. Look. All North Carolinians who pay income tax will see a tax cut. That is, that is uh, absolute. Uh, additionally, there were a number of other tax changes made. So last year, legislation was passed that eliminated the uh, medical deduction for, uh, for folks. We actually restored that this year and, and with no caps. So that's been a big issue for seniors but, and as, as well as for other folks um, you, who have family members or individuals with, with significant health bills. Uh, and we're very pleased to see that happen. Uh, this is a, a huge, huge tax cut for all North Carolinians, and we're very proud of it. And we were able to do so and at the same time ensure that we funded the core functions of state government. You're expanding the, the sales tax base as well to include some uh, repair and maintenance services. I know from my past conversations with you, you're not a huge fan of taxing uh, uh, services. Uh, I thought the idea of expanding the sales tax base was to lower the rates as well at the same time. What happened to that sort of idea? Well, of course, the whole tax package uh, taken in its entirety is a significant tax cut. Uh, really, the evidence is, is irrefutable to that. With respect to the, uh, the sales tax base expansion, it's a very modest base expansion. It doesn't go as far as the uh, Senate plan would have gone. What it does is it takes uh, situations where there are services provided that are, the, that are also part of the sale of a good uh, and, and brings that and makes that taxable. For example, if you buy a, um, uh, a dishwasher and you also pay to have it installed, then you would pay a service tax on the, uh, whatever the installation fee. The reason we did a very narrow approach to it was that we did not want to create any additional retailers or folks who would be collecting any kind of uh, uh, sales tax. So, we, so it's a very modest approach. It isn't some sort of broad uh, or wide ranging of uh, modification. And, and statewide, it's a, it's a very small amount. It's only about roughly $150 million statewide. Uh, the way that we do the formula to pay for it, uh, or excuse me, not the way to pay for it, but the way it actually is a portion is taking, and taking a uh, formula to try to benefit some of the more rural in poorer counties, principally so they can make improvements for education through teacher supplement pays as well as economic development. How was it decided which counties got what? Because it seems like uh, there are counties that don't get any of that money, uh, the urban areas mainly, or the rich counties as people want to say, and, and, and it's a different percentage for a lot of different counties. How was it determined how that was going to be distributed? Um, it was determined based upon what you would do if you did the 50-50 modification to the sales tax. The proposal in the uh, Senate version of House Bill 117 would actually have cost money to the, uh, to the cities, to the, to the urban counties. You would have actually seen counties that would have seen uh, a net reduction in the amount of the uh, sales tax 
all things considered. As a result, the uh, the the directive that I gave our finance folks was, I'm fine looking at some kind of reallocation, but you can only do it if you can show me that the uh, urban counties don't lose money, that they that they uh, that they're essentially held harmless or and even allowed to grow based on population growth. Uh, what this plan does is it, it represents that. Those percentages were arrived at how you would have uh, appropriated the additional roughly $84 million in tax revenue under the Senate plan, uh, but instead of going that route where you're actually literally taking money away from the urban counties, this plan allows the modest expansion and just apportions that money on that formula. So the benefit is is that there truly were no losers, and that's a very difficult spot to get to when you deal with tax policy. And it's kind of like a balloon sometimes if you squeeze over here and you create pressure over here. But the way this was arrived at with the modest base expansion actually uh, managed to achieve that goal. I know you wanted to do more for uh, state employees. And we saw the $750 raise uh, for uh, teachers and state employees. Some teachers right. will get more. But what is, what is your hope for year two? I know we've heard that there, there more can be done. At this point, and I know we're a ways off from that, you're right. just happy to get this well, deal done. What do you think can be done next year? Well, certainly this year we fully funded uh, the step raises for teachers and state employees. We uh, fully funded the uh, pay increase for new teachers uh, and recent hires. We also approved a $750 bonus for all state employees, which uh, while we would have preferred to have a raise as set forth in the House budget, uh, we believe this is a fair compromise. And it also leaves money for in the next cycle for the uh, uh, short session to come in and do more of a meaningful raise. And that's what we really want to be able to do. The uh, caucus has been overwhelming in, it, uh, in its support to see that we do more for state employees and teachers in North Carolina, uh, as well as our retirees, frankly. Uh, we'd like to see a COLA increase, uh, a meaningful COLA increase in next year's budget as well. All right, we're almost out of time. Unfortunately, I could spend hours talking to you. This is so such a, a big budget. But is this a budget that the governor signs later this week? Uh, we certainly hope uh, the governor will sign the budget. You know, it funds priorities. We protected teaching assistance. We funded the body cameras. That was a big issue. We, we're going to have roughly $400 million more each year going into transportation to try to ease congestion problems and other, other issues with our roads. Uh, it, you know, give, it protects jobs. Uh, it promotes economic development. Uh, this uh, this budget, you know, no budget bill, no piece of legislation is perfect, but uh, this is really a good uh, a good compromise, and I think it's a great budget that'll that'll be beneficial for all the folks here in North Carolina. All right, well, I know you guys are swamped this week, so I appreciate a little time. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Always a pleasure. Take care. All right, time for one last break. We'll return our insiders debate the pros and cons. Stay with us.